And while we wait, let's look at the Maldives currently trying to repair its international image after allegations that the former president was forced out in a military coup earlier this year. President Nasheed had announced his resignation in February after weeks of protests backed by the military and police. He later said he was forced to resign at gunpoint. He's called for new elections. His vice president, Dr. Mohammed Wahid Hassan, was sworn in as president. He set the date for the next presidential election as July 2013. Well, the newly elected president is in the UK as a member of the Commonwealth for the celebration of the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. He came into our studio a short time ago and I asked him if during his time in London, Commonwealth reiterated that they would like him to move to early elections. Uh, we've had a long discussion with the Commonwealth Secretary General yesterday. Uh, focus now is on an inquiry commission to try to uh, really establish what happened uh, prior to my assuming uh, uh, this uh, position of president because uh, the former president uh, uh, had made so many different allegations and so it's important that he was to, forced out, yeah, that he was forced out and so on, yes. So uh, set up a commission. Uh, there were some questions about its uh, impartiality and integrity, uh, unfortunately without actually examining its work. Uh, but I have agreed uh, with all the requests that were made by the Commonwealth Special Envoy, uh, Don Mackinnon, and we've agreed to adjust the terms of reference, put a co-chair co from Singapore, uh, and also put a former pre President Nasheed's uh, nominee on the panel. But do you agree with the former President Nasheed that it was a coup d'etat, that he was forced out? I don't believe so. I believe that... Uh, but he didn't he had, voluntarily, that's clear. I, I believe that he had difficulty ma managing a situation that got out of control. And um, he voluntarily resigned in front of live television. Well, he says, of course, he was forced. But given this controversial period that led to you becoming the president, doesn't that emphasize how important it is to have early elections? And I'm sure the Commonwealth told I'm, you that yesterday as well. I am in uh, favor of uh, elections, free and fair elections, uh, as soon as the Constitution would allow. Now, you're always falling back on the Constitution. Yes, you are the president. We, you could even be holding a more wide-ranging dialogue to bring more political people into, we, the, into the process, we, including people connected yeah. to former President Nasheed. You know, um, from day one, I wanted a national unity government. And therefore, I invited all political parties to join the government. That uh, invitation was extended to President Nasheed's party as well because they were quite bitter and didn't want to join the government. Um, we have eight political parties uh, in the cabinet. All of them are very well educated, uh, young people. And uh, these people represent uh, four, 46 members in the parliament, with a majority in the parliament. The whole cabinet was approved by the parliament. Uh, my nominee for vice president has also been approved by the parliament. Since then, we've had two by-elections by, uh, by for the parliament. Both of them have been won. Uh, there were seats that belonged to Nasheed's party before, but they have now been won by the coalition. You, you, make it, you, you present a, a picture of what would be a perfect democracy, perfect democratic practice, but the Commonwealth is still urging you to have, have a, a real dialogue, to go for early elections. So yeah. obviously, I, I don't know whether it's too far to say, your country is in crisis, which isn't good for a country which depends on tourism as one of its main revenue earners. Well, actually, uh, country is stable. Uh, parliament is in session. We haven't closed a school, not for one day. We haven't closed the government uh, office. Uh, airport has been fully functional. There has been no problem with the airport. Tourists are coming and going. So the situation is fairly normal. It's a new democracy, and therefore we expect uh, political parties to express their um, uh, views. But hundreds of opposition activists have been arrested, and there is a growing concern about what seems to be a climate of religious intolerance. The prominent um, liberal blogger, as you know, is in critical condition. Yes. He was stabbed. Yeah. Um, there are not. Uh, there aren't hundreds of people arrested. Uh, there were people who were arrested for arson, for burning down some buildings, uh, on the 8th of February. These people have been released. Um, their cases have been sent to Prosecutor General, who is independent and appointed by the Parliament. The judiciary is independent, and therefore, uh, during these last four months, um, their cases have been investigated and sent through the legal process. Uh, I have nothing to do with that. Um, 
and the place of Islam when you took well, after you, you see, took power you talked you said we're all mujahideen now we no, sent no, a certain no. message That's not true. no you see in uh, Maldives we use a lot of Arabic words you see uh, there are people whose name is jihad that doesn't mean they're mujahideen um, you're not taking action you know, against Islamist extremists you see uh, Maldives is a Islamic country 100% Islamic country and it has